Carolina Movement is a movement of churches across North Carolina with a heart to see every man, woman, and child in our state encounter Jesus. We believe the most effective way to accomplish this God-sized vision is through planting new churches in every major community here in North Carolina. However, it will take all of us working together to turn that dream into reality. That's why we are passionate about helping every church become a church planting church. At Carolina Movement, being a sending church is not just reserved for mega churches with mega budgets. We help every church have the opportunity to become a sending church through joining a church planting coalition. These coalitions partner with specific approved and assessed church planners to plant new life-giving churches in North Carolina communities who desperately need to hear about Jesus. We stumbled onto this coalition planting model in 2007 when Point Church in Raleigh and Vertical Church in Lumberton both wanted to plant a new church in Havelock, North Carolina. Unfortunately, neither was big enough or had enough resources to do it alone. However, through a move of the Holy Spirit, these two churches joined forces to plant Journey Church together. And that's how Carolina Movement was born. Since 2007, Carolina Movement has planted over a dozen new churches using our coalition model. Multiple sending churches combining forces to do what none of them could do alone. And by God's grace, it's really working. Every Carolina Movement church plant has not only survived, but has become a church planting church themselves. And so I invite you to join with us in this move of God. Whether you're an existing church or a new church planter, we would love to talk to you about how we can work together to change the spiritual landscape of North Carolina. Find out more information and join the movement at carolinamovement.com. Amen. Well, good morning. Great to see you guys. I tell you what, the man that you saw in that video, Chris Hankins, is here today. He is in person. He's not wearing the cool flannel shirt, but he is wearing purple. If you haven't met him, please come up and see him afterwards because he has become a dear friend over the last few years. Uh, you know, he's also the pastor of the 15 campuses around the city that you've seen and across the state for the Point Church. And uh, Chris, you have been such a blessing to my family. Um, you've been a blessing to this church, and you may not even know it, but your church and your reputation precedes you, brother. We are, there is probably not a more kingdom-minded pastor that I've met who holds things loosely. If there's anything you ever need, all you have to do is pick up the phone and say, Chris, can we do this? Can we? And he will send a team. He'll send a, uh, a flock of geese, whatever it takes. He will make sure you have what you need. And uh, Chris, I, I just appreciate you being here today. I'm fired up. Our church is fired up. Come on up here. Share God's word for us. Give them a round of applause. Let them know you love them. Love them, brother. Love you, brother. Well, good morning, Potter's Hand. It is truly an honor to be here. You know what, what your pastor Matt said, it has been a privilege to get to know him. He has truly become a dear friend, a brother from another mother, and so... We have been building just such a great relationship over the past few years, and so to be able to, to be here with you, man, it's like I get to like see like his family, and you know, it's like I'm getting invited over for dinner, uh, so this is just a privilege for me, and man, I, I hope you know just how blessed you are to have this guy as your pastor. I mean, he's the real deal, Amen. You know, I, I get to, to interact with him, you know, during the week and, and see him kind of outside of this environment. And let me tell you, he really loves Jesus and he really loves you. To have a pastor who doesn't just like to preach, and, you know, but man, who really loves people, really loves Jesus and really loves people. Let me tell you, you are blessed with this guy. And so I'm blessed to be here, and, and I, I just wanted to share my heart with you. There, there are a few things in life that I'm more passionate about than the local church. I love the local church. I believe the local church is the hope of the world. I, I believe the local church is the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, God's plan A to carry out his mission to see people from every tongue, tribe, people, and nation know his son, Jesus Christ. We are Jesus with flesh on 
all over the world. We are the local church. I love the local church. However, if I'm going to be honest, I'm, I, I love the local church, but I, I'm a little troubled. I'm, not, I'm, I'm a lot troubled about the, the state of the local church, but I am very hopeful. See, I've read the end of the book. I don't know if you guys have read the end of the book. It's pretty cool that we get to read the, the end of the story. And I know that Jesus wins, and I know that he builds his church, and, and I know that we carry the gospel for every, to every nook and cranny in the entire world. But there are some, some troubling facts about the local church where we live that I want to share with you. So I have a saying, facts are friends, all right? Now, now I'm going to kind of be a little interactive, so we're going to do some call and response. I don't know if that's how you guys usually do things, but, but repeat after me, facts are friends. You guys are doing great, and you led the way. Just, I know you would. Facts are friends. So let, me tell, let me share four troubling facts. Number one, that less than 18% of people in America go to church on Sunday. So if we take that for North Carolina, that means that 82% of people in North Carolina, which is over 8 million people, right now are not in church, are not praising our King Jesus. Fact number two, church attendance in America is declining. Every single major study shows that church attendance in America has declined dramatically. Over the last 50 years, David Olson in his book, The American Church in Crisis, says every state in the continental U.S., including ours, the old North State, has experienced a decrease in church attendance. Number three, there are fewer churches per person than ever before. In 1900, there were 27 churches for every 10,000 people. In 1950, there were 17 churches for every 10,000 people. In 1996, there were only 11 churches for every 10,000 people, and things have gotten a lot worse over the last 25 years. The population of the United States is growing eight times faster than the number of churches, and North Carolina is growing even faster than the rest of the country. Fact number four, existing churches are less effective. Unfortunately, the, not only have churches declined, but the churches that we do have are less effective at pointing people to Jesus, introducing people to Christ than ever before. In 1950, the average church of 100 people saw five and a half people follow Jesus in baptism per year. In 2011, that same church, the average church of 100 people, saw only two people follow Jesus in baptism per year. In 2018, baptisms hit their lowest level in 74 years. And in 2019, half of all churches in North Carolina saw zero baptisms. Half of all churches in North Carolina baptized zero people in 2019. And let me tell you, it didn't get any better in 2020. I'm hearing on average, on average, Churches saw 50% of their baptisms that they saw in the previous year in 2020. So let me sum it up, all right? Facts are friends, okay? This is the state of the church. 18% of people go to church on Sunday. Church attendance is declining. There are fewer churches, and existing churches are reaching less people. This is the state of the church in America and North Carolina. Facts are friends. We have to understand what reality is. Not live in a fantasy world. This is our reality. So how do we understand these facts in relation to the promise of Jesus in Matthew 16, 18, where Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not overcome it. Is Jesus just being unfaithful to his promise or is something else going on? Well, well, let's zoom out. You know, I think a lot of times, you know, we as Americans like to think that, that we are the center of the world, Right. The reality is that the church of Jesus is exploding around the world. Exploding. The, the church is growing like crazy in Africa and in Asia and in South America. By 2050, the global Christian population is expected to reach 3 billion. Guys, that's billion with a B, right? 3 billion people will call Jesus Christ Lord by 2050 if the, if the trends continue. So the good news is the gospel is growing, right? It's like that, 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 um, the, the yeast that, that 
worked its way into the flower, right? It's moving, it's growing, it's spreading all over the world. So what is going on here in America? We're left to answer the question, why is the gospel growing around the world and declining here? That's what we want to talk about. We want to search the scriptures and we want to pray for the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom. Heavenly Father, would you open our eyes to understand what is going on around us? Would you empower us? Would you give us wisdom? You say that if anyone lacks wisdom, we should pray and ask God, and you will give it generously without finding fault. So, God, we ask for wisdom. God, we ask you to empower us as your church to carry out your mission in this world, in this community, in Apex, North Carolina. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so Jesus is my favorite person in the whole world. And so we're going to study some of the teachings of Jesus. We're going to study three great teachings of Jesus that I believe if we can recapture as the church in America and North Carolina here in Apex. I live in Apex, by the way. Anybody for the peak of good living? All right. So if we can recapture this as the local church, I believe we can see the tide begin to turn, that we can see the lost become found, right? First great statement of Jesus is found in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. You may have heard it. It's called the Great Commission. Therefore, go. That's the first song we sing. I was loving it. I'm like, yes, they're teeing me up. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always. Jesus has not left us. He has not forsaken us to the very end of the age. See, this is the mission of the church. Unfortunately, many local churches over time can have what we call mission drift, right? Where they start out saying, yes, go and make disciples. But then it starts to become about other good things and we forget the main thing. One of my fellow Carolina Movement pastors, Quintel, says when we let the main thing be the main thing, the main thing will do its thing. Go and make disciples. The reality is we can't choose the mission of the church. Jesus has already given it to us. In fact, the biblical reality is that the mission came before the church. You could say the church doesn't have a mission. The mission has a church. In fact, I would say if we forget the mission, if we fail to go and make disciples, then we might just lose our right to call ourselves a church. And we also, in America, we have to get rid of this distorted theology, this idea that the mission field is somewhere else overseas in some jungle. And missionaries are people who get on planes and fly there. Guys, this is the end of the earth. Apex, North Carolina is over 6,000 miles from Jerusalem. We are standing right now on the ends of the earth. This is our mission field. You are the missionaries to go and to reach our neighbors and our co-workers and our family and your friends. We must go. And God has called you. First thing we see, if we're going to be the church of Jesus, then we must go. Everybody repeat after me. We must go. We must go. go. All right, let's look at number two. We have the Great Commission. And we have the great commandment of Jesus. Mark chapter 12, verse 28. said, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked them, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor As yourself, there's no commandment greater than these. You know, at first glance, you're like, Jesus, did you not understand the question? He said, what is the greatest commandment? And you gave two, right? It's like, Jesus, come on. The reality is this is called the great commandment to love. You see, you can't love God and hate your neighbor. The the two just don't go hand in hand, right? Uh, You cannot love God and hate your neighbor. We must be people who are marked and who are known by our love. 
Here's my prayer for your church, for my church, for all of our churches. Is that if we were ever, ever got to the place where we were saying, hey, we're going to pack up and we're going to move somewhere else. That the people in Apex, North Carolina would beg and plead and say, no, you can't go. You cannot leave this community because you do so much good and you love, love us so greatly that we don't know what we would do without you. That, that the, the Apex Town Council would, would beg Potter's Hand to stay right here because of the good and the love that you have for your neighbors. That even if they don't believe in Jesus, they would be blown away by our love. We must go and we must love. Now, I want to spend the majority of the rest of my time with you in John chapter 17. We have the great commission. We have the great commandment. And I believe John 17 is the great omission. <laughs> Many have called it the great collaboration, but I believe it is the great missing piece of the church in America. John chapter 17 contains Jesus' longest prayer in the Bible. It is an incredible prayer. And, and there's a part of this prayer where Jesus prays for the church. The only place where Jesus prays for the church and he prays for us. He doesn't just pray for his disciples. He doesn't just pray to the Father. He doesn't just pray over Israel. He prays for us. And I want you to listen to what he says. John chapter 17, verse 20, Jesus prays this. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. All right? So that's you and me. That's our churches. That all of them may be one. Father, just as you were in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, may they be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. See, this prayer is prayed directly for us, for all who will believe in Jesus. Now, Jesus could have prayed for a lot of things. He could have prayed for so many different things. And instead, he prayed for just one thing over and over and over again. Jesus prayed that we would be one. That we would have the same oneness that he had with the Father. You know, our church just recently preached through a series on the Trinity. And the Trinity is our model for relationships, right? The Father and the Son connected in this unbelievable unity, knowing their roles, loving one another, mutual submission, like caring for one another. It is just a beautiful picture. We are called to have the same oneness with one another that Jesus had with the Father. Guys, that's incredible. Now, we were going to have just a real honesty moment. If you were to look at the church in America, the church in North Carolina, would you say that, that Jesus' prayer has been answered in our midst? Would you say that the church in North Carolina has been brought to complete unity? I don't think so. <laughs> the reality is that we have, the church in America and in North Carolina has splintered into thousands of factions who don't talk to one another and most don't even think that, that the others are even Christians, right? Like, we have become known for our disunity, not our unity. And if we want the world to know, if we want North Carolina to know that Jesus is the real deal, that the Father has sent his Son into the world to save sinners, and they see us fighting, and they see us not getting along, and, and they see us not even associating with one another when we're called to be brothers and sisters. That, that, that this family, the family of God, is, is supposed to be even greater than our physical family, and yet we don't even associate with one another. That, that, that other churches are viewed as competition instead of family then don't expect your neighbors to see Jesus in you. Don't expect our neighbors to see Jesus in us when we are not the body of Christ. 
Did you know that for many, many years in America, the number one church planning methodology, church splits. <laughs> I remember uh, about seven or eight years ago, we, we merged with another church in Cary, and, and there was a, a family who, they came on like day one that we announced that we were coming together, and, and they said, you know, we want to stay because we've seen lots of churches split. We've never seen a church come together. <laughs> I remember the first church that I worked at, I was... Uh, 20 years old, and, and the pastor drove me around the town and it said, like, well, this church split off of this church, and then this church split off of this church, and this church split off of... Like, every church in the area was a church split off of another church. You know, God can use our foolishness. <laughs> and praise God for all those churches in that community. But do you really think that was God's will for how those churches got started? That, that our church, our chief uh, planting model is to say, I don't like you, and so I'm going to remove myself and take as many people because I don't like the music here, or I don't like the pastor here, or I don't like the way that we do things, or I don't like the color of the carpet. So I'm going to gather up as many people as possible and go start a new church. That seems about as opposite from John 17 as I can imagine. You know, we planted a church 11 years ago across the street from NC State. Not because we didn't like churches. Man, I love churches. And, and in fact, me and my wife, we were like, hey, we've been a part of so many amazing churches. What if we could take all the, the things that we love about our favorite churches and put them together into to a new church to reach lost people? On our, on our opening Sunday, we had five different churches represented on our worship team. I always tell people we had the most untalented launch team in the history Nobody could play an instrument. And so we had so many other churches who said, hey, you can have our keyboard player or, or our drummer or, or our, our, our soundboard operators could come in to help you guys out until you guys can find some people that God raises up. And it was a beautiful thing. If we're going to be the church of Jesus, then we must work together. We must work together. Together. This is called the great collaboration. Everybody say, we must work together. We must work together. We must be for each other, not against each other. You see, the time has come in America where it's not enough just to work beside each other. I think for a long time that was kind of our, our method. That was our idea. It was like, well, yeah, we're not against those people, right? Like, yeah, like, God bless you over there. Just don't mess with my people and, you know, just look, you do your thing and I'll do my thing and we'll work beside each other. Guys, that's not getting the job done. We, we have to stop just working beside each other and we have to start working with each other. We are the family of God. Maybe an analogy to help you, help you get it, the idea that the name on the front of the jersey is more important than the name of the back of the jersey, right? We're on Team Jesus, it's not Potter's Hand or Point Church or Hope Church or Summit Church or whatever church. We're on Team Jesus, right? And yes, we, are, we have local bodies, but we are on the same team. We must go, we must love, and we must do it together. Everybody say, go, love, together. Go, love, together. And I believe when we go and we love and we do it together, we will see God do amazing things. Think about it. When you go to another country to reach people who don't know Jesus, it just makes sense that you would partner together, right? We need to have that same mindset right here. Tim Keller says it this way. The only way to increase the number of Christians in a city is to plant thousands of new churches. Our prayer at Carolina Movement is to plant 100 new churches in North Carolina in 10 years. 100 churches in 10 years. See, there's no way one church could do that alone. No way. Not even the biggest and the best church in North Carolina. See, God is doing something special. By his grace, we have seen 12 churches planted in the last five years. By his grace, I thought for sure that this pandemic would, would knock out at least two or three of them. But by God's grace, every single one of those churches is actually stronger than they were when we started. And I think a big reason is that every one of those churches had multiple mother churches. 
that were standing behind them, standing with them, praying for them, helping them, sending funds to help in times of need. See, we're seeing a move of God. And I believe the reason that we're seeing the opposite of this decline, we're seeing people come to know Christ. Those baptism numbers for, for North Carolina and our Carolina Movement churches, let me tell you, man, they're seeing baptisms every single week. And I truly believe it's because we're going and we're loving and we're doing it together. You know, Pastor Matt shared with me a few weeks ago of, of the new vision for, for Potter's Hand Plant five new churches in the next five years. Let me tell you, Potter's Hand can't do that alone. But it can do it together. It can do it together with other churches. We've seen it happen over and over and over again. Just like we shared in that video earlier. Carolina Movement was born because we realized we couldn't do it alone. But we could do it together. We could do it together. So I want to invite Pastor Matt up. And and just to share a little bit about how... Uh, Potter's hand is going to go love together. Amen. Awesome. You guys see why we are so excited mm-hmm. when you find like-minded brothers, no. like-minded churches who don't care who gets the credit, because at times, you know, status quo is not cutting it. And if you were here a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. Pastor Chris referred to it. We launched a bold initiative saying, you know what? It's not just about building our kingdom. If the goal is just to put people into our one building or to pack a room for one hour a week. Our mission is way too small. Amen. And no wonder 18% of our neighbors, our families, our brothers and sisters even have a clue what we do here. 18%. That's even worse than I thought. And these numbers, while that's the bad news, the good news is what God is doing. He is pouring out his favor, and we see that. And so many of you, after my challenge two weeks ago, came up and said, Pastor, I am all in. I'm so fired up. I was getting pounds and high fives and people walking out and sending me emails. I got one and another one would show up my inbox. We are all in. Couldn't get to you after church, but listen, we want you to know we're excited. God is on the move. We want to share the gospel with people. I don't even know how to plug in. I don't even know how. I had one guy come up and say, I don't even know if you can use me, but here I am. Amen. Can you do that? Having lunch with him this week. It's incredible. I love to see God doing that. So here's what we're going to do today. I am so excited. We are going to share the breaking news and introduce. We're not waiting because you all said, let's go. So we're going to go. I want to introduce you to our first new church plant that is launching, not some way distant future time, but September, I believe September 19th. The name of the church is Grace City Church. I've got their logo. I want to put it up here. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and have the band come up and get in place because we're going to pray over them as we sing our, our final invocation song together. Grace City Church will be planted this September. They're already meeting online. They're already having a great digital presence, but we are going to pray for them. Now, I want to show you something. There is six logos that we have. These are the churches, and we are adding ours to this. We've got Hope Church, Sojourners Church, Multiply Church, Crossroads Church, Point Church in Fort Bragg. This is all over the state. Some of them are in Tabor City, Concord, Whiteville, Monroe, Fayetteville, all these churches, not just an apex thing. We're thinking bigger than this. So what we're going to do this morning is Pastor Daniel Smith and his lovely wife, Kiafa have prepared a special message just for you, just for us today. So I want you to sit back. They're going to share just a, a brief, I think it's about two minutes, and introduce themselves. We have a video for you, and then I'm going to come back and we'll, we'll pray for them. What's up, Potter's Hands Hello. Church? Uh, I'm Pastor Dan Lee, pastor of Grace City Church, and this is my beautiful wife, Kiafa. And we are so excited about what God is doing here in Concord, but not only here in Concord, but in our new relationship with the Potter's Hand Church. Yes, we and we it. just want to say that we are grateful uh, that Pastor Matt and the Potter's Hand congregation have come to support us and to rally around us as we move forward to help people to know God intimately, to grow in his grace, mm-hmm. and to go and to love others compassionately. Mm-hmm. And so we just wanted to introduce ourselves. If you are ever here in the Concord area, we want to invite you, come worship with us. Yes. Uh, we attend uh, at 930 Leanne Drive, that's in Concord, North Carolina, 28025. We would love to have you. Yes, we, um, would. we also are excited because we launched in the pandemic, we are having a grand opening on September the 19th, and we're going to be in touch with Pastor Matt. We want to extend an invitation for you guys to come help us with some of the things that we're going to be doing throughout the summer. 
it's going to be an amazing time and we're excited about what God is doing. So we just wanted to say hello. We love you. We thank you for partnering with us and uh, prayerfully we will be able to get there soon to be with you. So we are thankful for you and uh, we want to say have an amazing Sunday today. We love you. Have an amazing day. So that's awesome. So they are going to be coming up here and joining with us in worship. We'll be going over there. And hopefully I'm taking several of you. If you're interested in doing some local missions, and if you can't go, that's okay. There are things we can do here. But we are doing more than just sending them a few dollars. We are literally going to walk this road with them to be a partnership. So if you're interested in being on that team, if you want to go and do some mission work down there, over on the outside of Charlotte in the Concord area, would you let me know? Because this is something that is going to be coming up rapidly. We're already talking about canvassing this, some of the neighborhoods, hosting a block party with inflatables, maybe some VBS kind of things, also being down there on the 19th for launch. We might even send some of the band. We might be down there. I think Pastor Chris will be down there on that Sunday. It's going to be an incredible time. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to issue a challenge to you, okay? This slide right here, I want you to go, go ahead and get your phones out. Everybody can take your phone out. I won't be mad. It's, it's, it's okay. It's legit here. And I want you to take a picture of this slide, okay? And if you're watching online, you're at home, maybe you got a desktop, hit, do a screenshot, okay? Because I want us to do two things with your challenge this week. The first one is you're going to use this as a reminder to pray for Pastor Daniel and Kiafa, to pray for their church, to pray for their congregation, to pray for open hearts in that area, those who desperately need to hear the good news and are just part of the 18%. That's not going to cut it. So we're going to pray for a move of God to do that. The second part, you notice there's an email address and there's also an actual street address. If you really want to blow their minds, send them an email this week, maybe even today. Maybe you're, you're into letters and you could send a card just saying, hey, Pastor Matt introduced us today. We got to see you. We're so fired up. We love you. Even though we haven't met you, we're praying for you. Can you imagine what this would be like for them? They don't know we're doing this to get dozens if not hundreds of emails from fellow brothers and sisters in Christ say hey we're so excited about what God is doing we're with you we're team Jesus it's not about building my kingdom it's about building his kingdom so I would love to flood their inbox they don't know it's coming maybe today if you get a minute just say, it doesn't have to be long just even a sentence or two hey we're so excited we saw you today thanks for sharing that video with us God bless you let us know how we can help just something like that and let them know that you are praying for them all right so here's what we're going to do if you're new to the church we like to end a time with a little response and some worship before we go out into the world. We put some song lyrics up on the screen. We open up the altar. It's a very informal time. No one will bother you. But if you want to come and pray and join me at the altar to pray for Pastor Daniel and for Grace City Church and for God's movement, not only there but through us, then the altar will be open. Okay? Maybe you want to pray with one of us. Maybe you have a lost family member. Come lift their name before the Lord. There's something special when we humble ourselves and we kneel in his presence at the altar. Maybe you want to make right where you are an altar and just sing and worship the Lord. That's fine. Just be obedient, okay? Let's stand together. The lyrics will be on the screen. The altar is open. You come now and just be obedient as the Lord leads. <laughs>